Hey guys, today I want to talk about the different types of cutlass and how to make them. The Tiger Stop has different cutlass styles that you can use allowing you to push, pull, or position your material. Tiger Stops are designed to fit any machine tool where accuracy and repeatability are required. This includes chop saws, upcut saws, table saws, drills, iron workers, press brakes, you name it. This is why we have four different style lists to better suit your needs. The four types are pusher, set point, pattern, or pull list. Let's start with the pusher list. Now, we also have an optional tablet package with Tiger Touch that you can run it on, but for this video, we're just going to use the Tiger Stop controller. So on the main position screen, we're gonna see right at the bottom, D for show, so we're gonna select that, and it's going to expand and give us some other options we're going to select D for list. So it's gonna ask us the part list number to enter in. We can select anywhere from one to 99. So that's a total of 99 different cut lists that we can program and save. We can also add as many different part lists, part lengths, and quantities. So for this video, we'll just select part list number one, and we're gonna hit edit. So as we discussed before, you'll see the four different uh, cut list styles, A for pusher, C pattern, B set point, and D for pull. We'll select A for pusher. Now, the first option that we'll see on our screen is optimize part list. So whenever we run an optimized part list, it's going to take whatever it can fit in that stock length that you enter in. So it's never going to take it in the exact order that you enter in your lengths and your quantities. When we select a non-optimized, however, it will then take those parts from the exact order that you enter them into your list. For this video, we are going to select an optimized part list. So we'll hit A for yes. The next option is going to be your head and tail cut. So there are two options for that. There is global and local. Global is just a global parameter that you would set in the part list menu. So if you're doing the exact same head and tail cut, every single job that you run, it's recommended that you just set your global value and just select global every time. However, if you're looking to do a custom value depending on the material that you're cutting and so on, then I would suggest select local. For this video, we are going to select local. So we'll hit C for local and you'll see on the screen, it's asking us to put in the head cut value. So this would be our very first trim cut as we're running our pusher list. I'm going to select one inch and I will press okay. The next option will be tail cut. We're gonna do the same on the tail cut. We'll select one inch and press okay. Now you'll see on the screen, it's going to go to line one and it's gonna ask us for our first length and then for our quantity of that length. Um, so on this video, we're just going to make up a few lengths. I'll select 25 and an eighth. And once I press OK, it's going to go down to the next line and ask us for a quantity. Now, I'm going to select a quantity of 20. Once again, we'll hit OK. Now it, it's going to send us over to line two and it's going to ask us for our next length. So we'll select 15 and press OK. Once again, it will ask us for the quantity and we'll select 14 of these parts. We'll press OK. It will go on to line three. We'll do one more. We'll enter in 16 and a half, press OK, and we'll do a quantity of six and press OK. So we would continue this until we filled out our, our complete cut bill. Uh, in this case, we're just going to be done, so we'll hit D for done. Part list will now be saved. You have the option to either hit start to run or cancel to exit. So we'll go ahead and hit start to run. Now it's going to ask us to enter in the clear stock length. Now keep in mind, when we run a pusher list, we are now going to be loading the material on this side of the machine. 
and then the tiger stop will then start advancing the material as we make our cut. So our cut pieces are going to be on this side of the saw blade, meaning it's taking the kerf into consideration as it pushes it through. So to simulate, we'll run a 62 inch stock piece. The tiger stop will move to its load position. We would load our material and then we'll hit start for it to advance to its head cut position. Now, we would do our first trim cut. And as you can see, the tiger stop advances, making your finished part on this side of the blade, once again, taking the kerf into consideration. So we would run through that list. And then our last trim cut and it will move back to the load position. Now, it's always going to move back to the last load position and it's gonna ask you to enter in the clear stock length once again. So we would normally continue to run that list until the screen would prompt part list is empty. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to go on to the next list. So we're going to create a part list under the number two slot and then we'll select edit. And this time we're gonna select B for set point. So once again, the first option we'll see on the screen is optimize part list. It is going to randomly select which parts can best fit in your stock length. As opposed to when we run a non-optimized list, then it's going to run in the exact order that you enter in the part list. So we'll select optimize part list and same thing as in the pusher list, it's going to give us line one and it's gonna ask us for length and quantity. So we'll enter in 14 and press okay. And then we'll make 20 of those. Uh, once I press okay, it will go to line two and we'll do 16 and a half and press okay. And for the quantity, we'll do 45 of those. And we can continue on until we've completely entered in everything on our cut bill and then hit done. Once again, it'll say parts list is saved. Press start to run or cancel to exit. So we'll press start to run. I'll load my material. And it's going to ask us to enter in the clear stock length. Looks like this is 72 inches. So I'll enter in 72 and start. Now you'll notice the tiger stop moves forward to position because we're now running as a set point. So essentially it's running as a stop. So I will then butt the material up and make my first cut. And you'll see the tiger stop now moves to the next set point position. I'll then butt my material up and make a cut. And now it will ask us to enter in another clear stock length. So we'll continue to do that until we complete our cut bill, just like on a pusher list. All right, so now that we went over those, the next one we wanna go over is a, a pattern list. Now, a pattern list is generally used for boring, punching, and drilling applications because as we run a pattern list, it's gonna be the same list every single time. So you're gonna to move to the same positions every single time on every piece that you run on that list. We'll select D for list. And we'll select part list number three and edit. And we'll select C for pattern. Now it's gonna ask us for a head cut, but that's going to be the first position that we want it to move to from the beginning of your stock piece. So let's say we wanted to start at a two inch inset if we were to drill a hole, for example. So we'll select two inches and press okay. And then same for the tail cut. It wants to know on the far end, what is our last drill point or punch point that we want on our tail end. 
Uh, so we'll do the same value. We'll do a two inch value and press OK. And before it asks us what we want to do for lengths in between, it's going to ask for the stock length itself. So for this, we'll enter in 70 inches and press OK. And you'll see on line one, it's now going to give us a remainder and then ask us for our first length. So from that two inch drill point, let's say we wanted to go two inches and then six inches from there. So we'd hit six and press OK. And then it wants to know how many times do we want to do that increment. So for this, we're going to run two of those movements. And then once we press OK, it's going to give us an updated remainder. And from those two six inch points, let's say we want to run a three inch. And we want to run just one of those. We'll press OK. And then because we're doing a pattern, let's say we want to do that six inch and a quantity of two again, and we'll continue to repeat. Now, generally when we're running a pattern list, uh, especially when we're running boring, drilling, or punching, we don't necessarily want it to take kerf into consideration because we're looking for it to advance to the true value because there is no material that's actually being removed. So we would continue to run that until our remainder is gone on our stock piece and then we select done. Once again, it'll say parts list is saved, press start to run, press cancel to exit. So we'll hit start to run and whenever we run a pattern list, it's going to ask how many of those are you going to run for this job? So it'll have a done and your goal. So let's say we wanted to run six of these as our goal. We'd run six stock pieces. And this is going to run as a pusher list. So it'll advance to its first position. We'll hit start to move to the head position. And we would cycle our tool. It will advance. And we'd cycle our tool. and so on. And we'd continue to do that throughout the entire stock piece. Once we're complete, it would move to the load position and then we would load our next piece. The last one we have is a pull list. Now a pull list is going to be very similar to a pattern list in the sense that we are just moving to absolute positions based on that actual stock piece that we're going to be running over and over. So we'll select D for list and we'll go ahead and save it in list number four and select edit. And you'll see D for pull. Now same thing, it's gonna select head cut. So that's going to be our first movement that we want it to move to. Now it's going to run it exactly the same way with the exception of the tiger stop is going to move to the zero point grab the material and then pull it through as we're doing our drilling, punching or boring application. So we'll do a similar application where we'll just do a two inch head cut and a two inch tail cut. And once again, it's going to ask us to enter in the stock length beforehand. So we'll enter in 60 and press OK and it's going to give us the remainder and ask us for our first movement from that two inch point. So we'll enter in five inches and let's say we wanna do six of those five inch incremental movements and press okay. The remainder will then update. And now we want to do a three inch movement and we want to do that three times and press OK. And then we want to go back to that five inch movement. 
and do five of those and press OK. Now, as soon as we can see that our remainder is complete, then we'll hit done and we can press start to run the list. Same thing, it's going to ask us for the goal amount that we want to run, so how many stock pieces we want to run. So we'll keep it at six and we'll hit start. Now you'll notice the tiger stop moves to the zero point. It will then grab the material and then as we cycle our tool, it's going to start pulling back in an incremental movement, like so.